The video begins in a dimly lit university dorm bathroom. The young man alone in the room finishes using the facilities. Suddenly strange moaning and eerie noises can be heard, followed by unexplained knocking sounds echoing through the space. Pero ahorita está ruidos raros y se está tocando la puerta, pero quiero que vean que pues no hay nada. Vean, ahí está mi reflejo, mi reflejo, pero vean de este lado, pues aquí no hay nada, vean. ¿Ah? Tampoco, vean. Aquí tampoco hay nada. Y aquí pues también, vean. Y acá el lugar es bastante pequeño y está mi reflejo. Pero a ver, hoy. Escuchad. Escuchad. No hay nada. Panicking, the young man frantically turns the camera, attempting to capture the source of the unsettling sounds. In the final stall, something catches his eye, and he focuses the camera on what seems to be a figure looking back at him. As he continues to survey the area, the young man searches for signs of anyone else present, but the room appears empty. He checks each corner, one by one showing the viewers the entire bathroom in a futile attempt to explain the eerie occurrences. Despite his efforts, the young man concludes that there is nothing out of the ordinary around him, besides his own reflection in the mirror. The suspenseful atmosphere builds as the camera pans slowly around the room, the only sound now being the young man's heavy breathing. What could have caused the inexplicable events in the university dorm bathroom that day? The young man's encounter with the unknown raises more questions than answers. Gazing up at the sky at this very moment, there's something mysterious unfolding. And this is over the sky right now. Bright lights are flickering above, captivating the attention of numerous people along Highway 75. They were flickering lights and there's a bunch of people pulled over on 75. What the fuck? They're changing colors? Yeah, but what is it? The lights seem to shift colors, adding a sense of wonder and intrigue to the scene. Questions arise about what exactly is causing this enchanting display in the sky. What could it be? What the fuck is that? As darkness settled on the evening of July 29th, close to the late hour of 9 o'clock, a peculiar sight captured the attention of onlookers. I don't know what's going on here. It's about uh, almost 9 o'clock at night. Strange shapes lingered high in the sky above, their appearance foreign and unsettling. The observers were transfixed, their amazement mixed with a hint of fear. There is some wild-looking crap in the sky. Holy piss. Hold on. I'm gonna put my hat on backwards. I don't know what's going on. I hope these are in focus. Look at this. What the hell is going on here? Oh, please be picking this up. This is nuts. Look at that. It's 
God, I wish my neighbor was here right now. He comes out and watches for UFOs, but... But on this night, Yuri's silence reigned as the unusual spectacle unfolded before their eyes. In a world full of uncertainties, a peculiar trend is emerging where famous personalities and tech moguls are opting for a rather intriguing approach to ensure their future existence. Do you think that tra time travel is possible? You may say no, but what if we told you that there are scientists who are planning to make it happen? They want to transport people to a distant future and thousands of participants are willing. But they will not zoom through black holes. They will not travel in spaceships or fancy cars. They will be frozen. The concept is called cryonics, where a person's body is frozen in the hope that a future civilization will reanimate it. Instead of traditional survival shelters, they are choosing to undergo a process called cryonics. This unusual practice involves freezing oneself in the hope of being revived sometime in the future, whether near or distant. The idea of time travel and resurrection seems straight out of a science fiction tale. Could it really be possible? Imagine being preserved in a frozen state, like a modern-day mummy waiting for a futuristic civilization to awaken you? That is eventually that one day the frozen body will be rewarmed and revived. Kind of like a less gross version of mummification, with the expectation that the mummy will come back to life. While freezing techniques are commonly used in medical settings for preserving certain cells and tissues, the concept of cryonics takes it to a whole new level. Once a person is declared legally and clinically deceased, the cryonics process kicks in swiftly. The body is carefully cooled using dry ice then transferred to a specialized facility where it undergoes further chilling with chemicals to temperatures below minus 130 degrees Celsius. This extreme cold helps preserve the body's cells, akin to a prolonged coma but without any metabolism. Some may question whether these frozen individuals are truly dead or alive, but in reality, they exist in a limbo-like state between the two. Think of it as a pause in the natural cycle of life and death allowing the possibility of resuming life in the distant future. Influential figures like Jeff Bezos, Sam Altman, and Larry Page have shown interest in this unconventional practice, envisioning a chance to be brought back to life someday. While the concept may sound fantastical, very much like people in a long-term coma, except there's no, no metabolism. Uh, so to them, you know, no time is passing. So people say, well, if they're not alive, they must be dead. Well, no, there's kind of an in-between state, which is not really alive or dead. Uh, you know, by, by kind of a crude analogy, you have daytime and you have nighttime, uh, but you also have twilight in between because they kind of shade into one another. So in our view, uh, dying is a process and cryonics stops that process. It puts dying on a pause and lets you go into the future where we have greater capabilities to reverse that and bring you back to life. The allure of potential future advancements in science and technology fuels the hope of a second chance at living. It raises thought, provoking questions about the boundary between life and death, and the mysteries of what the future may hold for those daring to embrace cryonics. What do you think about this extraordinary journey into the unknown? Feel free to share your thoughts below and stay tuned for more intriguing topics like this. Let's delve deeper into this cryptic realm together. Notable footage captured by Lux during a storm in Florida reveals a peculiar occurrence. The audio recordings do not resemble typical thunder sounds, prompting intrigue and curiosity. Lux, a native Floridian, expresses astonishment at the unfamiliar noise permeating the stormy atmosphere. Witness this unaltered, unedited documentation and ponder the eerie nature of the captured phenomenon. What mysterious force could be at play during this unconventional storm in Florida? Okay, I don't know if my phone will pick this up or not, but I've been outside for like 15 minutes, and the thunder sounds bizarre. What is that? I'm a seventh generation Floridian and I have never heard thunder like that. That is, what is that? 
A mysterious event occurred in Ibiza on July 28, 2024, where you're a new UFO sighting. Witnesses captured something unusual on video. The UFO appears suddenly and disappears swiftly, leaving many questions unanswered. The object emits a faint glow around it, craft powered by plasma energy. Um. In a dark and mysterious setting, Guitar Miles presents a series of intriguing photos. These photos depict entities believed to be aliens or demons by some. Fascinated by these supernatural beings, Miles shares his deep knowledge on the topic, drawing from personal experiences. This topic, I have seen these entities, and this is the reason I do what I do. Anybody that's followed me for a long time knows this. I've had an account taken down because of some of the things I know, and I know that has a lot to do with it. The entity on the left, you can read it, is the one Aleister Crowley. If you don't know who Aleister Crowley is, you need to look into it. I don't have time to go into that. Uh, Aleister Crowley, definitely Lamb, the entity he saw that gave him his abilities, that gave him his magical abilities, that started a whole new religion through all of this. And this is the one on the left. The one on the right is the... Um, one of the entities that Stephen Greer has seen. These are the ones that try to tell you it's going to happen. Yeah, we're going to take you to your higher dimension, your higher self, and and you, we're going to let your consciousness exceed anything that you've seen here on planet Earth. And yeah, it's going to tell you. It told Alistair Crowley the same. As he delves into the identities of these entities, he highlights Alistair Crowley on the left and an entity cited by Stephen Greer on the right. These entities, as Miles explains, promise to elevate individuals to higher dimensions, offering to expand their consciousness beyond earthly limits. However, he warns that these beings may not have benevolent intentions. Referring back to historical predictions made by Roger Monroe in 1982, Miles emphasizes the notion that these entities may deceive and manipulate people for unknown purposes. It did this was going to happen, and it's happening. So you can stay a naysayer and believe whatever you want to believe, believe it's Pleiadians and all these other places from other galaxies all you want but you're going to be extremely extremely upset when you find out what the actual truth is because it's not what you think it is their whole goal is to do this check this out from 1982 in an interview with roger monroe this planet gets more and more difficult and calamities of all kind are striking the planet more and more frequently he said the grand plan the master's grand plan for harvesting the nations uh, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. And he said it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grand plan says it's, it's going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff because it says spirits, even spirits will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets and galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. And went on saying that uh, uh, they will claim uh, to have out-of-body experiences when the spirits will, through a trans medium, converse with influential people. Spirits will show themselves willing to give valuable guidance. Intriguingly, Monroe's prediction foretold of a great controversy between good and evil forces, with a grain plane set to harvest individuals for a mysterious cause. This enigmatic plan involves the inhabitants of distant planets warning Earth's population of impending destruction unless certain actions are taken to avert disaster. Miles questions the true motives behind these entities, urging caution in believing their promises of enlightenment and guidance. In a peculiar event, located in San Marcos, Texas on July 15, 2024, a witness reported an unusual sight in the sky.
The sighting appears to be a strange shadow, suspended in the middle of the sky. It's quite perplexing, leaving many curious about its origin and nature. Could others in the area have witnessed this mysterious phenomenon, or do you have any insights to share? We're watching an alleged UFO incident happening at White Sands. This is where humans did their first successful nuclear bomb explosion. UFOs seem really interested in our nuclear stuff. When we test nuclear bombs, they let out electromagnetic pulses that can mess with our electronics and communication. So it's not that shocking that there are many reports of UFOs and strange accidents at White Sands. Some people think it could just be a regular missile test. But there are definitely some interesting mysteries here. What do you think is going on with the UFOs at White Sands?